Hey everybody, Stephen Pivach here, broker and owner of the Pivach Properties Group in beautiful Austin, Texas with Compass Real Estate. And today's version of Open House Live, we are going to be taking you guys into one of the hottest neighborhoods in the Austin area, and that is the 78704 District, which is central slash very top south of Austin. Um, this neighborhood has been one of the most popular areas of Austin to relocate to or purchase a home in going well over 10 years. Um, it's an older neighborhood. Um, it's, it wouldn't be accurate to say that it's being regentrified. It's already been regentrified. Um, most of the homes here you'll see are going to be anywhere from the ages 60 years old to brand new construction. And the home we're going to be seeing today is a really fun one because it's a good example of a new construction detached home as close to downtown Austin as you can possibly get while still being in an actual neighborhood. Um, so a little bit of information on the 78704 area. So it's just a stone's throw away from downtown Austin. You can ride your bike to downtown Austin. It's a very fun, hip, Austin vibe type um, neighborhood. And so a lot of the architecture you'll see here is very reminiscent of that as well. So again, the home we're going to see today actually is a new construction home. Uh, the home that was on this lot was about 60 years old. What you're seeing a lot of builders doing today is that they're coming in, buying older homes on these lots, they're raising them to the ground, and they're basically building um, new construction homes. And some of the architecture too, because these lots are so small, because the way these, this neighborhood was platted well over 100 years ago when it was developed, the lots are not big. It was before we had big yards and monstrous play sets and that type of thing. So to accommodate that, a lot of these new construction homes in this area are being built up as opposed to out. And so that's this example of the home we're going to see today. This home is a three bed, two and a half bath home. It's about 1,840 square feet, um, but you'll get to see it's a three level home. So you're going to have your, your living area downstairs with a half bath. You'll have your bedrooms in the second level. And then the third level, which is the really fun level, is going to be your rooftop deck, which is another thing you're going to see most of the time here in 78704 to capitalize on the views as well as that urban lifestyle. So without further ado, let's get started. Bear with me, I'm trying to flip the camera. How does that work? Here you go. Again, it's only my second Facebook Live, so I'm still getting used to it. Okay, cool. So, this is a really good example of what you're going to see of a new build here in 78704. As you can see, it's built up, not out, because the lot itself is not very big. However, the designer and the builder did a really good job of capitalizing on the space for what you do have. So you've got a nice little front yard right here, completely fenced in. And for those of you who are local, this house is located at the corner of West Mary and 2nd Street. So we're right off of South First, which is a fantastic um, artery into downtown Austin. A lot of new development coming in around that uh, road as well. Dining, shopping, the whole nine yards. So Again, you can see, and this is basically your yard for this home, which again is also cognizant of the area. You don't have a traditional backyard. So what you're seeing a lot of these builders and these homeowners do is they're fencing in the front yard. So if they have a pet or if they have kids, you're secure. Um, and it also gives you great privacy. So here's the front of the home. And let's go ahead and walk in and check it out. So coming up to the door, you're going to see a lot of very modern features in general in this home. But you're going to see the split light 10-foot uh, door right here. I'm sorry, 8-foot door. You're gonna have the blue side slat, and then you're gonna have your cedar plank porch overhang. Very popular here in Austin, Texas. For the, again, those of you who are local, we're in cedar season now, so cedar's really fun to look at, and it smells good in your closet, but as far as breathing next to a cedar tree, it kinda of messes you up. As you can probably tell by my voice, I've got some allergies today. So this is a fun little feature. You see this a lot in Austin homes, not just in central Austin, but throughout really the area. Instead of having your traditional aluminum downspout that you'll see at a, at, a, at a hardware store, they basically go ahead and make it into an artistic type feature where when it rains, the water drips down and beads through those little chain links. And just like a good Austin night, they're reusing that water and they're watering a nice plant. So again, it's a really cool feature. It's functional and pretty at the same time, which is really what the architecture is all about for these types of homes in central Austin. So coming up the front porch, you're going to see from the outside, and we'll see this on the inside in a second, you've got a great floor to window, um, uh, floor to ceiling window, as well as an entry into the front porch. And that's going to create a lot of natural light and a lot of wide open feeling when you are entertaining from the inside of the house. So let's check it out. So this is your first level. 
And as I mentioned before, your first level in a home like this is primarily going to be your living area. Um, again, because of the size of the lot, you're not going to have a ranch style floor plan. It's basically going to be a pop-up build is what we call. It. And so your, your areas are gonna be split by level. You'll have living, uh, bedrooms up, and then a third level could be a game room. In this case, it's going to be a rooftop deck, uh, but you'll see kind of some different variations. So coming in off the front door, you have your living area. And this is, I guess leads out to the front porch like I showed you a second ago. So on a beautiful day like today, it's gorgeous here. It's about 68 degrees and sunny. It would be fantastic to open those doors up. You can have people coming and going from the front porch if you're entertaining or if you just wanted some nice fresh air coming into the home. So this is your family area. And one of the themes in this house is going to be like some of the ones we've seen before, windows. A lot of, lot of natural light, which is hard to do with these smaller homes that are split like this because you, a lot of times you're going to have other rooms that are going to be hindering the amount of window space you can use. So the designer did a really good job with this house. So there's your family area. Moving over, we're going to see the dining area. And again, you've got another floor to ceiling window. Now this one does not move, it's not sliding, it's really just more for aesthetic purposes. But again, lots of natural light coming in and fortunately, the builder was smart enough to put an additional privacy fence added to it. So you've got your neighbor's fence. You'll kind of see on the edge of this screenshot right here, that older, smaller looking fence. The builder was smart enough to go ahead and put an eight foot fence with some bamboo. So it's nice aesthetics. So we're standing in what you would call the breakfast area right now. Come over to this section of the home. We're gonna see the kitchen. Another entryway into the home. So this is going to take us into the side yard, which a lot of people are going to use as their backyard. Um, but it's kind of hard to tell from the, the frame right here, but you've got a lot of floor plan space right here. It's bigger than it looks on camera. And it's a wide open floor plan, so you can really be creative in how you want to lay out your furniture, how you want to be entertaining, and really how you want to create separation within the room itself. So let's check out everyone's favorite, well, one of everyone's favorite parts of the house, and that's the kitchen. So as you can see, like has, which has been this, the theme for many years, wide open kitchen to the rest of the family room downstairs. This is loaded with upgrades and some really cool modern yet functional features at the same time. So you'll see right here, something that's very popular right now is the difference between the countertops in your island and the rest of your surround. So here you have your stained and treated countertop, which is actually considered a porous countertop, so it's not necessarily where you're gonna to wanna to be doing your cooking and your cutting with raw chicken, you're gonna to wanna to do that for your other countertops, but it is stain proof. So you don't have to worry about smelling, spilling red wine or anything like that that's gonna you know, create stains that aren't going to come out. And included in the island is going to be your drink fridge. Right now they've got it with some Topo Chico and some LaCroix, I'm sure it would fit well, wonderfully as well with some beer, wine, whatever you want to do with it. So that's a fun little feature too. Next, we've got our commercial grade Sub-Zero fridge. Upgraded cabinets throughout. A really fun backsplash. In your drawers are going to be the upgraded slow close. That way there's no slamming, or if you do have small children, no pinching the fingers, which is always fun. Okay, so let's see what else we have in the kitchen. So again, with that theme of the windows and the light bright, you've got three nice size windows coming into your kitchen from the other side of the home. So sitting at your sink, you've got a decent little view, natural light, and you still have good privacy though with that fence and those trees outside. And you have your commercial grade, Wolf range, everybody knows Wolf is the gold standard as far as commercial ranges go that you'll see inside of residential homes. And you've got your farmhouse sink. This is another really popular feature you're seeing in a lot of homes of really any style these days. So not just modern architecture, but you're seeing this in more traditional remodels in other parts of town, um, and they're fun. Dishwasher. So now I'm standing where most people would, if you were the owner of the home, you're standing right adjacent to the island. You've got your lower, lower level microwave. That's again, a really popular thing these days. It's not up in the wall on top of your, you know, on top of your range or next to your fridge. And so from this vantage point, you can see the dining area, 
the family room, the foyer that leads into the family room, and then the walkthrough way to the other side to um, exit into the side yard. So let's go back in this direction. You probably just saw a little room that we haven't gone in yet. And this is going to be what most people would use as their main entrance off the house. Right outside this door, we're going to see it in a second. This is your carport. So we always start these videos coming off the front door. But I always like to show, especially people who are relocating, who can't see the house in person, what the vantage point is of how you're going to really be entering, entering and exiting your home on a regular basis. So you'll see something that is very common in this section of Austin. There is not an enclosed garage, but there is a nice upgraded carport. And so this is your entrance off of 2nd Street. Again, this house is the corner of 2nd and West Mary. And so you'll pull in, and it's nice because you don't really have a lot of gap between the carport and the home. So if you did have to you know, come out into the elements or there was some kind of rain or drizzle, you wouldn't really get wet. Your groceries wouldn't get ruined, that type of thing. So it was a really smart way of adding a covered carport in here while keeping that modern style and adding functionality at the same time. And here you've got little utility closet, utility room. Again, you've got some grass with this property with a yard. Some people with yards of this size are actually replacing their grass with AstroTurf, um, which at first might make you think, you know, the old Brady Bunch house with the AstroTurf, and that was kind of how does that work. AstroTurf's come a long way in the last 50 years. Um, you can, you pets can use it. It's, it's probably, water goes right through. It doesn't get ruined, keeps its color. So it's a real popular option for people who have smaller yards, not just in central Austin, but throughout. So coming out of your car, this is where you're basically going to be entering into your home, off the back door. And we haven't talked too much yet either about the lighting in this home. You've got some nice upgraded modern light features in here. I really like these four inch can lights. So they're smaller than your traditional can lights. They're more flush to the ceiling. Um, and these are the daylight bulbs. So you can kind of see a difference here between that color and the color in the can. Hopefully you guys can see that and that's just a personal preference type thing. So right off the back door, you have the kitchen, and then to our right, you have the laundry room. Some really fun tiles they picked out, and you're seeing a lot more of these in, in all of your wet areas in the homes, bathrooms, kitchens, and kind of like some of the features we saw out there, not just in areas like 78704, which everybody knows are hip and fun and modern. You're starting to see these types of design trends all throughout the city in rural areas as well, because it just adds a little pop of color. Um, and for resale, it's, it's, it's very good because people notice at the, at the very beginning that it's something you've probably done more recently, and so they know your kitchen or your bath um, has been remodeled you know, relatively sooner than later. So here is your washer and dryer hookups. As you can see, you have your water on the right, and it's also stubbed for, for gas. So if you have a natural gas dryer and you want to continue to use natural gas and have some money savings, you can do that as opposed to electric, but they do have electric for those of you who have electric. And right here, a little makeshift mudroom area to hang your coats, jackets, backpacks, laptops. And then right off the laundry room, this is super important. You have a guest bath on the main level. So again, going back to that floor plan idea, because these homes are built up and not out, you're limited in some ways as to bedrooms or bathrooms on the main level for your guests to use. So if your footprint of the floor plan does not allow for a bedroom, you almost always want to allow for a bathroom downstairs for several reasons. Number one, you don't want your guests to have to be going upstairs and climbing upstairs. And number two, you don't want your guests to have to use your personal bathroom. Sometimes it's nice to have them go into the guest bathroom. So this is a nice little feature. Not too big, but doesn't need to be very big. A fun mosaic white backsplash you got your commode and again you see that fun decorative tile all the way throughout the bathroom and the laundry room all right so we've just seen the main level let's go ahead and make our way upstairs So right off the bat, you'll notice the really fun stainless steel um, elements of the staircase, not just in the banister, but also in your, your sideways angled spindles 
and they even added it on the back panels of the um, seamless steps, which is really fun. And that's just a cool modern touch. Storage under the stairs, always nice. Some people refer to this as the Harry Potter room. And another fun feature I want to kind of point out is going to be your, um, your colors and stuff in this house. And so what you'll see a lot of times in this area of town are going to be those lighter, cooler temperature colors. You're not going to have those dark browns and those tans. You're going to have a lot of whites, blues, grays. And so here you can see, in addition to the stainless steel, they picked a really nice light maple coloring with the flooring and the stairs, as well as throughout the entire flooring of the home. Let's head upstairs. So now we're on the second level, and this is gonna be the level where you're gonna have your bedrooms. So right off the staircase, you've got your first secondary bedroom, which a secondary bedroom is just a bedroom that is not your master. Again, Lots of great natural light. Great use of windows. And it was smart to have the windows put up higher right here, number one, for privacy. But number two, you still have plenty of room for furniture configuration. I can't tell you how many homes I've seen over the years where they'll put a window in a space that may look really cool or they'll put an additional uh, closet in a room that looks fun when it comes to organizing your furniture it's not functional whatsoever. So this is a really good functional and a good sized secondary bedroom for the square footage. And you've got a decent sized closet here as well. And this is going to be your larger of the secondaries. So I can tell you, it's hard to see on video, but as far as the size goes, you could relatively easily fit a for sure a full-size bed in here you could do a queen bed but i wouldn't suggest one with large furniture or four post or that type of thing um but ideally you could do a full-size bed in here a nice size dresser and an end table and you'd be pretty comfortable so let's make our way back to the hallway and those are going to be the stairs that lead us to the third level which we'll see here in a minute but back to the second level you've got your First full bath that we're seeing for the day. So this is going to be your, your full bath for your guests and for those staying in the secondary bedrooms. So again, with the natural light, they did a fantastic job. Very nice stylized long plank tile, which is very popular right now. I love this, um, this sink because it's got the space underneath for storage. It's a great color. All the colors here blend very well together. Um, but this, I can tell you, the way this sink is built, it didn't cost an arm and a leg, but it looks fantastic. Just from a builder standpoint, I can appreciate that. And then there you have your mirrors, which have the built-in lighting behind. And look at that. You have a medicine cabinet with USB ports. This is very smart thinking especially when you have guests. So let's make our way over here. You've got this beautiful tile backsplash that goes outside of the shower all the way to the mirror. And then there is your rain shower. It's kind of difficult to see. Again, it's hard with portrait mode and that's how Facebook Live works. But you've got your barn door sliding glass seamless shower. Pretty cool. And again, it, I apologize not being able to see the space that well, but this is a very comfortably sized secondary bathroom right off the hallway. So going back to the hallway, to our left, we have the other secondary bedroom. Now this one is going to be a little smaller. In fact, I'm not gonna lie, it's a decent bit smaller. And, and this can be deceiving sometimes, and that's something to pay attention to when you're looking at a house online. And that's really when most people start to look, do their home search. 
you know, they'll go to any website and there's a billion I can name off to you. Um, I like pvouchproperties.com, but I'm biased. But anyway, when you start your home search, it's hard to gauge how big or small the home is just by square footage. Layout means a lot. And so this is a really good example of a room that is technically a bedroom because it has a closet. So here's a little real estate 101 for all of you newbies out there. If you're looking at a home and it claims to have four bedrooms, but one of those quote unquote bedrooms doesn't have a closet, it's not a bedroom. And so when you're offering in a home like that or negotiating, you have to point that out, not just because it hurts your ability to use it the way you want, but more importantly, it will affect your resale as well. So in this case, this builder is able to say it is a bedroom because it has a closet. And I would say from a realistic standpoint, you could put a twin bed in here, no problem. You can put a dresser in here in a nightstand, but ideally you're probably looking at like a day bed, TV mounted on the wall and a small dresser underneath. Again, totally fine for a bedroom, but this would be more of a, let's say you've got uh, somebody who lives in the other secondary, this one right here, full time. I would say this bedroom is really gonna be more for guests slash office. So really a day bed with maybe a desk and a computer and there's probably the best use for it. So now we've seen the secondaries, let's make our way into the master. And it is nice. Again, with the gorgeous windows in here that allow for great lighting. And you'll notice too, kind of going back to those modern features, you don't see any trim around these windows. You don't see any molding in the corners and the angles. And it's, it's again, this type of style is supposed to be very clean, very elegant, not cluttered. But I can't say it enough, the builder did a great job of capitalizing on the natural daylight because remember, this is an older neighborhood. So even though it's got mature trees like the one you have outside here, these houses are pretty close together because these lots were so small. So they really paid attention in their CAD design on how they could add a lot of natural light while still giving you 100% privacy throughout the home. So now I'm standing in the corner of the master and this does give you a good idea of how big it is. This is a large master bedroom. And you've got the beautiful eight foot single panel barn doors. And that's another thing when it comes to you know, upgrading your home or looking at homes that have upgrades that are considered modern, another more little real estate one-on-one -on -one thing. Not all hardware is created equal. You can go on Etsy and find some hardware like this. I mean, of this size, I'd say 200 bucks. This, I can tell you right here, the one they have, this door and whole setup for just this one closet, easily $2,000. Um, not just in the craftsmanship of the, of the wood, but the type of wood it is and also the quality of the hardware as well. So those are just little things when you're looking at new construction homes, which a lot of people don't have experience in because most areas of the country, people haven't had an experience to live in a new construction home. So when they move to an area like Texas, really any market in Texas, you can find an affordable new construction home. It's really difficult to understand the quality of what you're looking at. So it's very important to have a real estate agent and or builder you know with who can walk you through the home and can point out the stuff and they can say, you know what, that might look pretty, but it's going to break. Or you know what, it doesn't look pretty, but that's quality, you're good. So a little tidbit. This is your master closet. And they've already added in some great customization in here. And they, it's a good use of customization. So sometimes you'll see closets that have your more traditional built-in dressers and your wood shelves. And they look pretty, but they're very bulky. These are open air baskets. So in a closet of this size, it makes it seem much bigger than it really is. To have open air, it's great for organization. And again, something like this too is also gonna be very important for the resale of your home. There's your natural light again. And this is a good use because I've seen master closets where they'll put a window all the way down here and it might look pretty, but what do you do? You can't put your clothes there or a dresser. So this is a good combination of functionality and natural light in a master closet. And they even added a floor to ceiling mirror as well. So let's head over to the other side of the master with that other beautiful eight foot barn door into your master bath. You're gonna see very similar colors to the other bathroom that we already saw. The cabinets are the same color, same type of countertop, really fun, fountain style, sink. I'll try to turn it on here for you. Pretty cool. I will say one thing about sinks like this. You've gotta be a little careful with how much pressure you pull out, because like that, 
when you put your hands to wash underneath, you can be splashed and it could be messy like some restaurants you might go to. So it takes a little getting used to, but aesthetically speaking, they're gorgeous. You've got a full length mirror, opens to your commode right here. Sorry, I'm like a broken record. And then you have a huge full size soaking tub with your rinsing wand attached. Then I'm gonna back up a little bit so you can see the shower. Again, seamless, frameless shower, rain shower head. Straight ahead, you'll see your rinsing wand. And you've got your controls right here. So as is with everything we've seen with this home, very modern, very clean, but very high end finish out without adding to the price to where it becomes just crazy unaffordable. It's one of those things where when you come to building a home like this, you've got levels. So for example, you know, the, the countertop here in the bathroom, you can have a level one to a level 20. And my advice to people who are building is always, you know what, if you can get away to level four and nobody knows the difference, save the money and get a great granite or a great countertop. Same with the tile here, same with the backsplash, same with all the features. And that's something that everybody in our team really specializes in is new construction. Um, all of us have spent time in the new construction industry you know, as a profession, in addition to being a broker or an agent with it. So we're very knowledgeable, again, with some of those things I pointed out, which is quality of finish out, ways to, you know, upgrade your home. If you're renovating it, for example, and using materials that aren't going to break your bank, but are going to give you great aesthetics and great use as well. So now let's head up to the third level. Looking up, we've got a really cool light feature there. Let's look down because it's always kind of fun. So you've got your turret staircase. And one thing I'll point out here as well, I don't know if you can see that little box right there in the wall, that's for your, um, that's for your floor step lighting. And so it puts off a very light glow of, of, of luminous when you turn it on at night. So it's kind of like a night light that's built into the wall. So for your guests or for yourself, because this is a multi-level floor plan, there's a good chance you're gonna to have to go up and down the stairs to do things in the evening. And that creates a nice little light that keeps you safe and from tripping. Right. Coming up to the top of the third level, we have our entrance to the upper deck. Now this is something you're starting to see a lot of with these new construction homes in the 78704 area. Because again, because you have to build up and not out, you want to have A, an outdoor living space, but not only that, since you're building up, might as well have a rooftop deck and it's really fun. And so you'll see a lot of homes with this. In fact, this home right here, your neighbor, Theirs isn't quite as high, but they've got that rooftop deck as well. And it may be a little hard to see with this video, but you do have views of downtown. Right through there, the trees, I call that the Lego building. It's a really cool, it's the tallest building in downtown Austin right now. It's, it's stacked like Legos, so it's pretty fun. What a pretty day to be doing this. So again, Builder was smart. They put a little privacy partition here because right on the other side of that is gonna be your neighbor's yard. I'll kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. And so that's a good thing to point out. There's a play set there. A lot of people have the misconception that in 78704 or central downtown, it's only an area for people who don't have children or aren't large families. And to an extent, you know, I would say the majority of people that live in this area are gonna be your double income, no kids type, um, households, um, singles, maybe roommate type situations, but you're seeing more and more families move to this area of town because the schools are still pretty good. You've got convenience for everything you're looking for. You can walk to your grocery store, to your shopping, retail the whole nine yards, and it's also great for commuting as well. And so just wanted to point that out since we're seeing that. But as far as this house goes, I've got a great little partition right here that gives you even more privacy. So if you did have your neighbors outside in the yard, you can sit here, have a glass of wine, a cup of coffee, and feel totally private. And you can see the deck extends past the doorway here. So it's pretty large. Very private. You got your pin-eye poles there. So if you wanted to go ahead and add a cover, 
you easily could. The builder's already taken that into consideration, which is why they put those in. And you'll also see them extending here as well. And that's exactly what that's going to be eventually, a cover for the outside. But it's kind of as you want it, which is nice, it's retractable. So one thing you might notice too, a, we're high, so that's going to attribute to it as well. But also, you will hear a little road traffic out here because we are so close to downtown. We are off of South First. But you'll notice when we walk back into the house, no noise. And that, again, goes back to the idea of the quality of construction and the quality of materials that the builder chose in constructing this home. Because they took into account, you are going to have a little more traffic because of its central location, you don't want to hear cars buzzing by and motorcycles, mopeds, some of those scooters that everybody rents downtown and takes all over the world, which looks like fun. I haven't gotten a chance to do it yet. So let's go back down. I believe the last thing we have to check out that we haven't seen yet is going to be the side yard. Going all the way back down to the main level. Oh, I'm sorry, a little shaky. Okay, so now we're at the foot of the stairs. Got your kitchen again. Let's go ahead. This is going to be, again, there's two exit points off the family room. One is to the front porch. This is going to be your exit point off the side yard. There's your privacy fence again. Leads into your front yard. And you'll notice here too, they divided the yard up into different sections. So this is actually gravel. We like to call that zero escape here in Texas, which means you don't have to water grass or do yard work. So it's a really good combination that the builder did with this house of combining traditional elements of a yard with grass where you could put a place that if you had kids, let your dog or pet run around, go to the bathroom, whatever it is, while still not having too much to maintain, which is where this gravel comes into play. And in some areas too, you'll also have things to consider like impervious cover. That's a development builder term, basically is regarding to how much concrete you're allowed to build your house on top of. And some areas of town have a limitation to how big your slab can be, which is another reason why some of these homes you're gonna see are built up, not out, because impervious cover restrictions may only allow them to have a certain you know, size footprint. And so the smaller the footprint, the more they're gonna build up. Now we're back in the center of the home, looking at the kitchen. And that, my friends, is gonna do it. So kind of give you a recap again. We're in 78704, right at the corner of West Mary and 2nd Street, a new construction home that was on top of a lot where it had an older home originally. Something you're seeing a lot of in 78704, just because anytime you're, you're seeing new construction in a, in a mature area, it's either gonna be almost a complete new build or it's either gonna be a new build or almost a complete renovation. And so this is a good example of how builders are coming in uh, reinvigorating the neighborhood by taking down an older, smaller home probably and building up and creating an entire new element of buyers and lifestyle in this part of town. Um, and like I said before, this area of town has been really considered one of the hottest areas of Austin for well over 10 years. Um, it's great for people who are relocating here who maybe aren't quite sure where they're going to end up permanently in Austin. So they want to end up somewhere, they want to start out somewhere close to downtown. This gives you that element. Um, it's great for people who've lived here for a while and once they decide, you know what, the downtown central living lifestyle is for me, it's great for them as well. But like I said too, you saw the neighbors over here, they had a full big place set in a nice size yard and you've got more people and more families that you know, 20 years ago were moving out to the suburbs are now starting to move back in closer to the cities. Um, because of local small businesses, shopping access, commuting as well, and then people who care about things like greenhouse emissions, who maybe want to ride their bike to work, or they want to walk to work, or walk to school instead of driving a car. They do carpool sharing, that type of thing. So very excited we got to show this house for you here today. If you're thinking of moving to the Austin area and you know anybody from here, you'll almost always hear the term 78704. It's a zip code, by the way. You'll hear the term 78704 come up in conversation. You can now say you've seen a house in 78704, and not just any house, a brand new construction house right off of one of the main drags 
Um, very Built very well, very convenient. And again, the styles you've seen today are very reminiscent of what you're seeing for a lot of homes that are being built brand new in this area right now. So again, Stephen Pivach, broker and owner of the Pivach Properties Group with Compass Real Estate here in beautiful Austin, Texas. If you like this video and wanna see more like it, please be sure to go ahead and turn on your notifications if you're watching this on Facebook. If you're watching this video on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. That way you can be updated um, uh, immediately when we have these videos posted or when we're live so you can continue to get an idea of what you get for your money, what you get for style, and what's, what you get for the different areas all around Austin, Texas. So Stephen Peabach, Peabach Properties, thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.